All right, hello everyone. I am back. Well, physically I'm here. We'll see how the rest of it, <laughs> the rest of it shows up or not. But no, I am back. I'm glad to be back. Um, vacation was very good. Much needed rest and family time um, in many ways. So lots of fun adventures <laughs> on vacation. So it was it was all good. So thank you all for. Um, what do I want to say? Giving me the time off to, to get that rest. And of course, I have to give a big thank you to the elders um, uh, and Karen, the chair of the elders, for filling in and doing all that they needed to do while I was gone. A huge thank you to Terry Bartlett, who preached the first Sunday I was gone. Um, he is phenomenal. So if you were here, or you got to watch worship online. I'm certain you enjoyed his message. Um, he always gives powerful, he, he just, he's a powerful um, message giver. <laughs> See, it's, I'll get there. I'll get there. Don't worry. Um, and then a huge thank you to uh, the 90th Anniversary Planning Committee. Cal, uh, Laddie helping out, uh, Janine, everybody that was a part of that who did worship last week. I'm so sorry it wasn't recorded. Um, so sad I missed it because it sounded like it was an incredible worship service. So thank you all for putting the time and energy into that. Um, there's a lot that goes into a worship service. So especially when you're adding in pictures and videos and all those things. So um, just I can't thank you all enough for just doing what you did to make worship happen the past couple of weeks. Uh, I have a few things to start us off with, and then I have some help who are going to add to those things, and then, <laughs> well, I'll get to that. Uh, the recycle cans are still back there. If you were, I'm looking into what it takes for us to become what is called a green chalice church, and that is a church that recycles, a church that is doing many of the things that we are already doing here, replacing light bulbs that are more um, efficient, the LED lights, the garden. Um, I know there's more, but we're already in the process of doing some of these things. And so being a Green Chalice Church just uh, pushes us to do a little bit more and makes us a part of a wider group of disciples uh, doing what they can for the environment and to help with climate change and all those things. So it's a it's a really cool ministry. I'm looking into it. Um, but whether we do that or not, to recycle is a good thing. So the recycle boxes are back there. The garden uh, ministry that we have, I just saw it when I came in for the first time in person. Work on bringing that to life outside is coming along great. So that's really cool. So if you haven't seen it, take a look at where they're at with their progress. There's a board meeting this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. That means I will not be in the building on Tuesday during the day. I love you all, but I'm not going to drive home and back and forth a couple of times in one day. That's a lot of driving. Um, so I think I'll just wait and come in the evening. So if you need me Tuesday, call me. I will be working on things. I'll just be doing it from home until I show up here in the evening. Um, camp has officially begun. Camp, The camping season down at Camp Christian. Grandparents camp was the first official camp that happened, and it was Thursday to Saturday, I think. I think it was Thursday to Saturday. Grandparents and their grandkids who are in kindergarten and first grade spent a few days at camp. Um, I think Holly was down there uh, with their grandkids and their son Josh, even though he's not a grandparent, he filled in for Jim, so they enjoyed that. And then today is the first day of the first middle school camp that we have going on this summer. So I ask that as we go through the summer, we will keep our campers in our prayers, and we will also keep our staffers and regional um, it, staff in our prayers as well as they navigate the camp season. And our very own Kirsten Allen is one of those staffers. So while we will keep her in our prayers, I would also like to encourage uh, the sending of mail 
to Kirsten over the summer, whether you're a camper or a staff or whoever you are, it is always fun to get that piece of paper in the mail that says, hope you're having a good summer, we're thinking about you. So if you need the camp address, I think we'll go ahead and put it in the bulletin uh, so that you have that for the summer or we'll, we'll post it somewhere as well. So we'll make sure that you get that, but do I encourage you to send Kirsten some mail. And if you're looking for a card, there's plenty of cards over there in the secret sister area back there, which Michelle was pointing to and only I saw, but she did a really good job. Um, yeah, so there's plenty of cards back there. If you need one, go ahead and um, get one. So, and now I will turn it over to who wants to go first. Don't. Kim's got something to share. Thank you to everyone who came last night. We, I think everybody had a good time at the party. Um, and that was the first round of people seeing Dave's artwork. So you probably noticed when you came in on the tables, there's a bunch of watercolors out there that Dave has painted. Um, you really do want to get one of these if you can. If they have a red dot on them, you can't have those because someone already bought them. Um, and he is graciously donating all the proceeds to the AV fund. So I think he, he told me this morning he thinks he's up to $515. Each painting is $25. And no, that's not a multiple of 25, but someone gave him extra money for their painting. So that's where the 15 came in. So you're welcome to give more than 25 if you want to. Um, so just trying to do something different to raise the money. I know everyone only has a certain amount and sometimes we kind of like take from our general fund money and kind of put it to the special thing and then the general fund hurts. So you don't want to do that, but you do want to buy a painting for $25 or more if you want to. And my guess is if somebody has a red dot on their painting, and you want to make it a challenge and raise the price, we could get into a bidding war. But of course, the red dot person has the option to say, no, they're not going to do that. But um, so stop and look at them. Yeah, you can't have mine either. But so take a look. And he loves talking about them. So yeah. And welcome back without a cane, you're walking and moving, huh? That's great, how about that? <laughs> okay, I have uh, two things to share with you. One is, um, it's summertime and there's a lot of work going on around here outside, and we have two gentlemen that spend a lot of time out there, Steve and uh, Ted, who do a lot of the mowing and the trimming, and they, like us, like to take some vacations and do things and get outside too, so. They are looking for people to volunteer to help them with that duty. So if you can help them out in any way and do that, they would greatly appreciate it. Along with that thought, uh, we're going to be putting together, the trustees are going to be putting together a couple of work parties on Saturdays. Because if you look around this place outside, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. We lost two people that used to do a lot of that, the Battens, who are now in Texas or Florida, I don't remember which, Texas, I think. And they used to do a lot of that work and uh, they're no longer here available to do that. So we gotta pick up that slack. So we will be scheduling a couple of work parties, okay? Come, I you know the trustees are responsible for the property, but that doesn't mean we have to do all the work. Uh, we can appreciate having anybody that can come, bring your grandkids, we'll put them to work as well. If they need to get some community service hours, it's a good way to get it. And we'll be glad to sign any papers that they need to do that, but any kind of help we can get to do that, so more on that later. Secondly, you all received with your bulletin this morning a nice little note that Cal put together and a form. We're not sure if this was done before in this church or not. It's something that came from the region, and we have to do this. The search committee, that is, has to do this in order for us to start getting candidates to come in for reviews, to interview for the church. It's a very simple form. Most of the stuff that's on here we're already doing. But so we just need you to review that next week, and then next week, which is the 19th, which is Father's Day, I believe, we are going to, between Sunday school class and the church service, have a brief congregational meeting to vote on this to accept it, 
it's a code of ethics and a code of conduct. Okay, so that will be something that we'll need to take care of. The search committee is right now putting together the final touches on the profile we had to do. Thank you those who filled out the surveys. We've gathered all that information. We've put it together. Valdine is in the process of formalizing all that stuff. For our last meeting, we went through and reviewed it all, picked up as much stuff as we could. We think we got it as clean as we can get it. We will review that one more time, have this passed. We will send it to the regional office, and then they will start matching candidates to our profile that we send in. So that's the process that they go through. Any minister who is looking for a position who's in the search and call, as Ali said, will be matched against those profiles that we filled out in those surveys, and then we'll start interviewing for a new pastor, and hopefully we'll find some excellent candidates. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I appreciate the search committee and all the work they're doing. It is not easy work. It is time consuming. Um, but I know that the group that is doing it is a very prayerful group. And I just appreciate all they're putting into that. So if you have ever had any questions about what's going on, don't hesitate to ask anyone. Um, there are a few more things just check over your bulletin. Again, like Glenn said, we're going to have a short congregational meeting next Sunday. Uh, we'll start it at 1030, so it'll be right between Sunday school and worship so that you all can um, affirm that you the code of ethics. And just so you know, like Glenn said, uh, people like myself who are candidates in search and call, um, we have our own code. We have a code of ethics. We must sign and affirm as well. So the very things that you are affirming, we are affirming them. The language might be slightly different. Uh, as our role as a candidate versus as we as a congregation. But we are held to a very firm code of ethics as well. So what you're doing, as I have said before, what the church is doing, your candidates are doing on their end as well. It might just look t a tiny bit different, um, but you're all doing the same work so that the, you and the best candidate can be matched together. Um, so thank you, search committee, for all that you are doing. And the last thing I believe I have to share with you all this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know who our musically gifted people are here this morning. But if you are musically gifted and you can sing a cappella, <laughs> please sing loudly this morning. Sam was off this weekend, and so Jeremy was going to be on. And poor Jeremy texted me this morning, and the poor guy has food poisoning. So, uh, <laughs> so unfortunately, I chose to say, please stay home. So I felt that was a good choice. So we are going to figure this music thing out on our own this morning. And you know what? We'll make it work, right? We always do. So to account for are, uh, unless someone can jump up there and hit the piano right now, to account for the change in our music situation, I decided that our first hymn that we were going to sing as we gather, I really like that hymn a lot. I really like the words and the way it begins worship for us. So I decided this morning, instead of singing what, that one, we are going to say it all together as a call to worship. Then I will pray... And then we will try to tackle this is the day. So will you all join with me now in saying the words to the song as we gather as our call to worship? As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name, knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, We'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. I think, is that it? It was just, okay, good. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God of love and peace and grace and hope, we are so grateful for this day. And for this opportunity to come together 
to worship with one another, to be in community with one another, and to find a place of acceptance just as we are. God, there is a lot going on in this world. There are people hurting, people hating, and people fighting in many ways. We don't know why, we don't understand, we don't know what we can do to make it better. So God, as we are here today, work in our hearts and show us how we can be examples of your peace, examples of your love, and examples of your hope, wherever we are, to help bring change. We know it'll take a while. We know it won't happen overnight. But God, help us take those steps, one at a time, to make change in this world. God, be with us as we move through this worship time, this new adventure, whatever it may be, whatever we may learn, and open our eyes, ears, and hearts for whatever you are calling us to hear this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we have no Steve, we have no Jeremy, we have no Sam, but we have each other, so let's stand, and we're going to sing This Is The Day. And if you have a loud musical voice and you want to start us off, it'd probably be better than mine, and I am more than okay with that, but we'll see. So, are we ready? Yeah. Worship and wonder. Psst. Hi. So before you go, is it all right if I pray with you? Yeah. All right. We're going to do this. You ready? Do you want to hold my? Are you okay with? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. God, we thank you for the gift of your beautiful daughter here today. We are so grateful for her love and her smile and her energy and the life she brings to each one of us. God, be with her as she goes to learn more about you and your unconditional great love you have for her. Be with her and Miss Chris as they have worship together in their special place, learning about you and learning about your love. We pray all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. All right, have fun. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'm reading from Psalm 112, verses 1 to 8. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. God will come to those who are generous and lend freely who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. At this time, we ask that uh, we stand and we will sing our doxology and our deacon will bring forward.
our offering. All right. Ready? Yep. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we give you praise this day. Praise for all the saints that have been at New Horizons Christian Church through the past 90 years. We uh, ask you to praise them for their service and their time, their talents, and their offerings. We ask that you bless these offerings now and help us to continue in our work to do your work here on earth. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. So I didn't share this before, um, but I want to tell you about my new t-shirt. <laughs> um, it says, the neighborhood is the family, and it's from a Haitian proverb, and I absolutely love it, and one of the reasons I absolutely love it is because I think my shirt, the neighborhood is the family, speaks about this church and how we view the neighborhood. That our neighborhood is the family, whether people have never set foot in this building or whether they have and haven't come, whatever, whether they've come for food, they know they're welcome here. And I think that just really fits with the series that we are doing this summer, this building a bigger table, which we are starting today. And this concept and idea to build a bigger table, to build a messy, authentic, and hopeful spiritual community, this comes from the book by John Pavlovich. And I love the book, and I just keep underlining things and underlining things, and I should probably underline the things that aren't catching my attention because more of the book is underlined than not. But as we move through this series this summer, I will be sharing things from this book, insights and ideas written by the author, but author, author. <laughs> and I'm very excited about all of it. And I have three reasons why I'm excited about this series we're doing. The first is I believe that this series is going to help us determine who God is calling us to be as a church, in this new phase of life that we are in. And that is something really important for us to do as a church. And as your interim pastor, this is one of the big goals that I am tasked with while I am in this particular role, is to help this community of faith figure out who you, we are, and how God is calling us to be the church of here and now, so that this body of Christ can continue to be built up and continue doing this ministry in these neighborhoods for many years to come. That's our first task. Another reason I am excited about this series is because as people of the table, as disciples of Christ, we celebrate communion every Sunday. Every time we come today, together, this meal is important to us. So as people of the table, we are called to make sure that everyone knows they are welcomed at the table, just as God has welcomed each one of us. And the way that we can do that is by making sure that people know that welcome, to make sure that people know that God's table is bigger than any walls or structure or rules or exclusions that anyone wants to put on that welcome. Nothing, nothing excludes anyone from God's table. 
And we all represent that table as followers of Christ, as disciples of Christ. We represent this table wherever we go in whatever we do. We don't have to agree with everyone who comes to the table. We don't even have to like everyone who comes to the table. But on behalf of God, what we do have to do as believers in Christ, as disciples of Christ, is we have to share the invitation and that welcome to the table to everyone, just as God has welcomed each one of us. The third reason I am excited about this series is because my hope for this church is to, through this summer, build a picnic table. <laughs> we are going to build a physical table outside these walls. We're going to build a physical table so that anyone needing sanctuary, a place to rest, a place to lay down, a place to eat the food they take from the blessing box, a place to just be. It exists outside these walls for whoever may need it. Sure, people may graffiti on it. They might write on it, mess it up, whatever. We're not going to worry about that today. As a matter of fact, we're really not going to worry about that too much at all. But we'll tackle those what ifs in a few weeks. But today, what I want you to know is we're going to build a table physically outside these walls this summer. So I hope you all have a handy hammer and you're ready to do some building because, and I liked how Glenn called it a work party. That's good. I'm going to use that on my kids now. Hey, kids, we're having a work party outside. So you get the mower and you get to party with the weed whacker and you get to, we got to remember that, a work party. I like that. We're going to have a work party building that picnic table too, let me tell you. But as we do this work this summer, I acknowledge that it might be heavy and difficult work at times. It's going to take breaking apart some of our comfort zones and changing the shape of some things in the way that we have grown used to them being. Maybe for some of us, some of you, I know it won't be me, that it'll be pain-free and exciting and invigorating the whole time. That's great. I hope that's the way it is for all of us. But I know for me, it's going to take some work. And it's not always going to be easy. But I truly believe, no matter if this work is difficult or pain-free, I truly believe that this series is going to be life-giving and transformational for this church. I truly believe that when we are done working through this series, we will be the church of a bigger table. We will be a messy, authentic and hopeful spiritual community. And that when people say, oh, you're from New Horizons Christian Church, that's, that's what God had intended for church. Today, our scripture, I believe that it starts us off on a heavy but right foot for this uh, series that we're on. It comes from the Gospel of Luke, and I'm going to pull it up right here. It comes from the Gospel of Luke. And it is about what it means to be a disciple, the cost of being a disciple. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life. Such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, 
Everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciples. And then there's the infamous line at the end that says, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor the manure pile. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Everything has a cost, doesn't it? To go on vacation has a cost, because when you come back, you have lots of work waiting for you. There is a monetary cost to many things, right? But more so the cost of us, right? How much of ourselves are we willing to give? To be in a relationship, to leave a relationship, to receive or take a new job, to leave a job, to build a garden, to give food to kids at a local elementary school so they have something to eat over the weekend, to replace sound equipment in a sanctuary, to have a place where people can come and get clothes when they need it, to build a picnic table outside so that people have a place to sit and rest. Everything has a cost. To start a brand new church over 90 years ago in the midst of the Depression, that had a cost. When two churches decided to merge, there was a cost for both churches. When talks of an oil well were proposed to go on this property, there was a cost to that. Everything, everything has a cost. As I begin this series with great excitement, I was on vacation writing all these notes, and I was just, we can do this, and we can do this. And then the scripture went, whack. It hit me upside the head. And when it ends in there, when it says, even unto death. Now, depending on what version you read, it might say something slightly different. But when it says, if you're not willing to give everything, even to death, that was an incredible wake-up call. It was a call for me to stay a little more grounded in awareness. That what we are doing here this summer, this building a bigger table, it has some hefty costs. Now, in this scripture, when crowds were cheering for Jesus, following him and celebrating because they were excited to be his disciples, to be a part of this new faith, this new thing, the scripture shows us that they really didn't understand what it meant to follow him. The cost it would have to be to be his follower huge. And this parade and this excitement was probably energizing, right? Everybody wanted to, you know, you've been to a parade. People are throwing candy. Everybody, oh, it drives me nuts. And you start in one place, they start throwing the candy, and then everyone slowly moves more and more forward. And then before you know it, there's three rows of people in front of you. It's exciting to be at a parade. It draws you in. But to be a part of this new hope that everyone was so excited about, this telling of a new kingdom, which offered people new faith, new life, I'm sure it was infectious to want to be a part of that, to jump on that bandwagon, to move forward with the crowd. But they did it. Those people there did it without knowing the cost. 
So Jesus gives all these hard-hitting realities. Hating your family, even life itself, to the point of death depending on what version you're reading, like I said. And then he also talks of carrying your cross, which at that time and place in Roman, in the the history, the Roman Empire, Empire, when they wanted to crucify someone, they made them carry their own cross through the town that they would be crucified on to make them a visible example to other people of what you would have to carry, what you would have to do before you even were crucified if you didn't submit to them. This horrendous difficulty seemed like an impossible task. And so Jesus keeps going by asking them if they were building something, wouldn't they determine the cost first? And they get halfway through the project, we ran out of money. He goes on and Um, he keeps using the, and then he uses the example of war. If you were going to war, wouldn't you determine this king, how many troops he would need? And then he goes on and says, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Talk about bursting the bubble of excitement, right? You have to give away everything, everything. All these people were buzzing with this energy and this wanting to be a part of this new faith. And then Jesus says, you got to give it all if you really want this. This new life, this new thing has a cost. And you should take that into consideration before you follow me. Costs that go beyond dollar amounts. Costs that go beyond just a requirement of being a good family member or neighbor. Costs that go even further than anything we could possibly own or possess. A cost that says nothing is greater than our faith in Christ. A cost that means no matter what, no matter what difficulties may come, nothing can defeat that faith in Christ that we now have, that we will give everything for that faith. So Jesus says, you want this really big faith? Good for you. But you have not weighed what it's really going to cost you. Do you really have what it takes to go all the way? The good news for us, there is always good news, right? It's all good news. So the good news for us, as we weigh the scripture in context with this building a bigger table that we're going to be doing, the good news for us is that we have great examples of those who have gone before us, who did estimate the cost, and who did give whatever was necessary to follow their faith. They gave up all they possessed to become Jesus' disciples, to answer the call that God had on their lives. When this church first started planning its life here well over 90 years ago, there was an incredible cost. I'm certain of it. I wasn't there, but I'm certain of it. I'm sure the founders, I'm sure they spent time determining what that cost would be to bring this church to life, especially in the midst of the Depression, when people were hurting in so many ways. They had to determine those financial costs, yes, but then they had to determine, more importantly, what would it cost to be a part of this neighborhood? Would people be happy to have this church here, or would people want them out of the way? What would it cost to build structures, to have the time, energy, and people to be in leadership to support this church? Did they have enough to make it happen? When East Market Street and Mead Avenue assessed their individual churches and decided that they needed to come together, you better believe they estimated the cost of that. For two churches to merge... That has big costs in a lot of ways. Yes, again, 
financial costs. But what would it cost each church in their membership, in those who were serving, and even in their staff? What was it going to cost each one of those churches to come together? As I said before, I know, I have heard the stories that when the talks of the oil well came into play on this property, I know that the costs of that were greatly estimated. The positives and negatives were all taken into account when determining whether or not to move forward with that offer from the company. Yet somehow in the midst of not everyone at the table agreeing, everyone still came to the table and moved forward with the best decision they knew they needed to make. When the garden ministry talked about bringing the gardens over from Goodyear Heights to this property, they have been estimating the cost for a couple of years. It takes time and energy. Would they have the woman power? Would they have the man power? And despite the what ifs, that ministry has continued to move forward and it's coming to life outside now. And the same is true for us as we begin this series, working on figuring out who God is calling us to be as a church, how we can be that church of a bigger table. So we must begin, I think it is appropriate to begin by estimating the cost. The cost of doing the work to build that bigger table so that we are sure and we are willing to see it through, to give whatever it takes for people everywhere. No matter who they are, what they look like, who they love. So that we can make sure that people everywhere know just how big God's table is and that they are welcome at that table. So to build this bigger table, God's table that is bigger than any walls or structures or rules, or exclusions. A table where nothing excludes anyone from it. A table where that we all represent as followers of Christ, as disciples of Christ. A table we represent wherever we are, whatever we do. What's it going to cost? And I don't know that answer for you. And I don't know that answer for us as a church yet. We'll work on that. But my hope for you and my homework for you this week is to build that bigger table. What do you think it's going to cost you? I invite you to pray about that, discern that, and think about that this week. Because... The question you're going to need to answer next week is, are you in? Whatever that cost is, are you in to see it through? I hope the answer is yes. Now this week, we don't have a hymn of invitation. And without knowing it, I planned it this way earlier in the week when I was working on my sermon and working on worship. I planned it this way, and now that we are an a cappella church today, <laughs> I'm kind of glad it worked out that way. See, things work out, don't they? You stress about the things that need stress. You don't worry about the other things. It all works out. So as we move, instead of doing the hymn of invitation, and we move to uh, the communion table. While we do our best to sing our communion hymn that takes us to the table, I'm still giving you a bit of an invitation today. I invite you as we sing this song together to think about what it cost Jesus for each one of us to come to this table. And for you to think about 
Are you willing to give whatever it takes for others to know this same invitation to receive God's great, unconditional love that you are invited to receive at this table? So, as we stand and sing, uh, seek ye first, right? Yep, and this is a camp song. Well, I know it's in your hymnal, but it is a familiar one for those of us who are Camp Christian alumni. So hopefully, if you are, you'll, it's, you'll just chime in. I know you will. I don't even have to ask. So as we stand and prepare to come to the communion table, oh, before we do that, let me just walk through this. I've been gone a couple weeks, so it's a good refresher for me, too. The way that we do communion here is we will... I will, myself and our elder, who is Pat today, after, while we're singing this song, we're going to go to the table. When we get up there, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. I will do the words of institution, and then Pat will pray. And our deacon will come up with us, and then when we are done praying at the table, we will serve each other communion, and then we will bring communion down here. And then starting at the back of the church, you all will come forward and you will take communion up here with the, wa the bread, which is the wafer on the bread tray, and then we will have two trays with the juice. It is grape juice. Um, and you will take your bread and your juice here, and then you are, will go back to your seat and you will pray. It will be a little quiet today because we will not have the piano in the background. Um, hmm. I'm thinking on my feet. I could play music. Should I play music, Adam? So the microphone picks it up? What do, you, do you want me to play music while we do communion, or should we just have it quiet? You all are a part of this. Worship is a participatory thing, so what do you want me to do? Music? No music? Quiet? All right. Your voice has been heard. So we will, we will have it quiet while we take communion today. Thank you for the feedback. Um, and then when communion is over, we will sing our last song and we'll do the benediction. So are we good? All right. All right. Let us stand and sing, seek ye first, as we prepare to come to the communion table. You may be seated. That was beautiful. As we begin our time around this table, let us do so by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
We come remembering that night when Jesus sat with his disciples and after get, taking the bread, giving thanks, he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we look so forward to coming to this table each and every Sunday to start afresh our new week. It's a table set by your son who gave himself a willing sacrifice that we may have eternal life. So we ask a blessing on this bread and this juice that represents his body broken for us and his blood spilt for our forgiveness of our sins. And we ask it all in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen.
we like to sit and have. So we're going to take just a couple more minutes to just sit and be in prayer. for meeting us at this table of love and abundance each and every time we gather here. May we know that without a doubt, that love never wavers or never changes. There's nothing that we can do that would ever take your love away from us. God, let us continue to hold that love close to our heart as we go and do this crazy thing called life, doing our best wherever we can and however we can. Thank you for this love. Amen. As we end our worship, our closing hymn is, Lord, I lift your name on high. So we're going to stand and we're going to sing, and I don't care if we're off key, and I don't care whatever it takes. Let us just join our voices make some joyful noise and sing. It's why we do it, right? That's what matters. So um, as we go from this place, let us go taking this great invitation and welcome of love for each one of us just as we are out into this world. And let's start building that bigger table and sharing that love with whoever we can, wherever we can, in all the places we can. Amen.